The first validation rule will check whether the value is not empty and will be represented by the keyword required. Hence, our method name will also have the same name. So static required and we will take value. And now going back to our validator class just to show you once again. So this is what we call in this method. Rule will represent the keyword required. So that's going to represent the method required on the rule class and it will take value params will never be provided with the required uh, validation so params will not go into this method at all okay so what we need to do here is to check whether the value passed through has any value whether it's not an empty string null or anything like that so what we're going to do is to use our helper class which we've created earlier let's just quickly import it right at the top of this file so helper from and it's going to be three levels up core and then helper class and semicolon all those validation rule and methods they should return true when the field has the correct value otherwise they should return false so here we're going to use return statement and we check whether the value is not empty so helper starting with the exclamation mark obviously is empty and then the value so if the value was empty it will return false otherwise it will re return true which will tell us that the field has a correct value okay now most of the other methods uh, most of the other validation rules will only apply if there is a value in a field so what we want to do is to create a helper method called validate if not empty so static validate if not empty and it will take value and the callback function so call back and here we are going to check if and then helper again is empty and we pass value as an argument then return true otherwise return callback and a set of brackets to indicate that we are actually executing the callback function the next method will check for a minimum number of characters in a string on the minimum number of items in the array or properties in the object. The method will be called min, M-I-N, so static, M-I-N, and we take value and params. Now this time params will be represented by a number because our rule will be sent in the fo following way. M I N colon and then parameters. So, for instance, three minimum three characters or three items in the array and so on. Okay, so set of curly brackets and we first check if type of our value is string. So, if our value is of a string type, then we return and we use this helper method we created earlier. We need to use a class name because we are using static methods of so validate if not empty value and then the callback function, which is where we are actually checking whether the length of this value is more or equal to whatever we have with the part within the params. So return and we're going to go value dot length is more or equals params. Now otherwise we simply return object, we get its keys from that value and then the length which will represent number of items in the array or number of properties of the given object and again if it's more or equals what params have associated with it okay now once again going through this because this might be a little bit confusing we may have sometimes rules where we won't require the field but if there is a value we want to check for a minimum number of characters and this is why if it's a string then we will simply only run it when there is a value if there is no value then required uh, rule should take care of it already so if there is no value then obviously required will return error unless the field is optional if there won't be required associated with the field then we won't run this minimum rule at all but that's only for the string if it's an array or an object we will always check whether the field has the required minimum number of items in the array or the properties in the object okay so that's our minimum method next one will be maximum so static max and the same approach as before value and params and we are going to start with exactly same thing so what i'm going to do is copy this entire block from within the minimum the only difference now will be we are checking for less or equal rather than more or equal 
and the same for the object length. So that's our maximum rule. Then we're going to have an email one. So static email and this one will only take value. And with email, if we just start by returning rule again, and we're only going to run it if value is not empty, so we pass value as argument, and then our callback function. And here, what we are going to do is first create a pattern constant, so constant pattern, and this pattern we are going to copy from if we open our project and open the readme file you'll see we have two regexes here one for email the other one for password so let's copy this one for email and paste it and now what we need to do is return we're going to use our pattern and then test against the value sent through as an argument so this is our email pattern. If you want to check, uh, change this regex to any other regex that checks for email, then obviously feel free to modify this however, however you feel uh, relevant. Okay, so that's email rule. Then we're going to have uh, password rule as well. So static password, and again, just value as an argument. And again, we're going to return uh, a rule with the validate if not empty we only want to validate if value is provided and uh, here we are going to use constant as well with the pattern pattern this time will be this other one from a readme file and again you can change it to however you'd like it to be and then the same thing return pattern test against the value so it needs to match this regex. And after password, we are going to have method which will check. It will usually be uh, used with the checkboxes, which may return yes, on, number one, zero, true, false, and so on. Uh, so static, a method called accepted, we are going to call it, and value as an argument. And then return, and we're going to use the array. We put a few values, so it may have yes, it may have on, it may have integer one, it may have string one, it may have true boolean as well. And we need to check if this array includes the value that we are being passed through as an argument. If this value is within this array, then return true, otherwise return false. And the last rule that we are going to add during this course is going to be checking whether the value is in a given set of items, which will be separated by comma. So static in, and we're going to have value, and then params. Now this specific rule will be passed through as this. In, and let's say one, two, three, five. Only these numbers are valid, everything else is invalid. So params will represent the string separated by comma. So again, return, and we're going to use rule, validate if not empty, value, and then we have a callback, return, we have our params. We're going to split them because we want to create an array. They will be separated by comma, so string comma, and then map method, which will have item as an argument. And what we want to do is make sure that this item is trimmed. If there's any space in between at the end, at the beginning, then we want to trim it. So item trim. And this is method, so set of brackets. And then we are going to check if in this array of trimmed items, if we include the one that represents the value, but we want to turn it to string, so to string. And the reason why we want to turn it to string is because even if we pass through something like this, in one, two, again, these spaces will be trimmed using this map method here, uh, and say four, these are integers, but they will be, when using split, all of the values, including numbers, they will be turned into a string. So that's why we need to turn our value to string in case we're passing an integer. So we need to turn it to a string because we're going to be comparing to an array of strings.
And again, if you would like to learn more about the native methods that we've used during this video, you can navigate to developer.mozilla.org and search for string prototype split, which is one of the methods that we've used. Then we also used a regex uh, test method, and then we have object keys as well.